these are some properties that uh, this estimator of the mean, the sample mean that you use every day, but you may not know about it. You, you may not know that from a mathematical, statistical point of view, you're using it. Um, this estimator has some properties. Here are the properties. So when you try to predict the future using this estimator, these are the things you should look out for. I hope you your favorite because you were here and uh, apologies for the bad lining, but um, as you know, I just moved and I don't have my ring light, I think it's called, and uh, Natural light today is pretty bad, so apologies for that. The quality of the video is going to be not as decent as usual, uh, but uh, at least you get to see my pretty face, right? So what I'm going to talk about today is, I think, pretty interesting, and uh, that is how, what is, the, I mean, what's the best way, uh, not in my opinion, but uh, one of the best ways you can try to predict Pokemon future returns. Now, pay attention, I said returns, not price. Uh, try to use the price of a, let's say, a booster box. Let's, let's talk, I'm going to refer to booster boxes, but it applies to everything, uh, to any Pokemon product. Um, pri you, you cannot use price as a measure. Why? Well, if you can, when it comes to make comparison, right? Let's say you want to compare the price, you know, the price of one box and the other, they're going to have different prices. They're going to move differently. If you compare returns, then you're gonna have the same, um, you know, it's kind of, you would say it's, you're adjusting the scale. You're using the same scale. So that's why you use your return. So what I want to talk about today is a few good habit that you could, uh, you should implement when you try to estimate. And I say that uh, with taking a, a deep breath, uh, the future returns of uh, let's say you boost your box again. I'm going to refer to use box, blah, blah, blah. I already said it. So your best guess, obviously, would be, okay, uh, I look at one year. Uh, over one year, uh, a Fusion Strike booster box made 30%. Now, is that a good way to estimate what could happen the, the following year? In some way, yes. In some other, no. Why is that so? Well, first of all, when you do that, you're taking into consideration one observation, which is the return over one year. So you have one observation. If you take the average of that observation, the, the average is, is the observation itself by definition. So you know what is called the sample mean. So the mean derived by data is going to be the same as you're all in observation. That's a definition of sample mean. Now, what is good and what is bad about it? The good thing is that such a um, tool has a property that is called unbiased. What does it mean? It means that on average, your best guess at future returns is going to be the sample mean is the same as the true value, which is the mean. Now, if you're confused, as I said previously on the channel, the mean is a theoretical object. The sample mean is uh, the empirical mean derived from data. When you take the average of whatever returns, you look at your survey of returns, you take the average, that's a sample mean. The mean of, you know, what is going to be the mean of the returns in the future, you don't know. You can try to estimate it using the sample mean. You look at the past to try to predict the future as statistic. So again, the mean, you don't know. You try to estimate it using the sample mean. What are some properties of the sample mean? Unbiased. So if you have one observation, the good thing is that the average of the observation is the observation itself. If you take, once again, one year returns of Fusion Strike Booster Box, your average is the observation, the one year return. That is, no matter how many data points you have, so how many observations, that is unbiased. On average, it's going to be the same as the mean, the true value. So you could say that in the future, you could expect the same because on average, you have the true value. However, however, there is a problem. What is the problem? If you have one observation, 
you are lacking the property called consistency. Now, this is a bit more less intuitive. Consistency in an estimator, and for those of you who are still watching, props to you. Uh, this is not simple things, but it's if it was simple, everyone will be talking about it. Uh, if no one's talking about it, it's because they don't either don't know or they, I mean, yeah, probably they don't know and they don't make, uh, you know, saying poly evolved reprint um, makes m much more clicks. So, consistency means you have your estimator. We're talking about the sample mean right now. Does the sample mean equal to the mean. So can you use the sample mean as a tool to estimate the future? Why are you trying to estimate the future? Well, obviously to make money uh, in this case. Um, so you try to estimate the future returns of that Fusion Strike booster box. Can you do that? Well, I hope you so many from the future. So I was obviously editing the video and uh, yeah, I also have clothes. Um, I was editing the video and I figured out that uh, this part may be confusing. So a note, and as I always say, I, despite English is obviously not my first language, I value every single word that comes out of my mouth, whether uh, that is um, exists in the English language or not. So this time I'm talking about consistency. I never say uh, the sample mean um, approaches equals the true value, so the mean on average. I never mentioned the word on average, which is what I was doing when referring to the property of unbiasedness. Hopefully that's how you say it. Um, so notice that I never say on average and uh, it'll be explained furthermore as you watch the video why I never say on average. It's, uh, it's a different type of uh, property. It doesn't care into the average. It cares about the error you make uh, that it has to be small in probability. So. Uh, Basically, as you will hear, the probability of the error making by using the sample mean and not the mean, the probability that that error is large, as I'll say, tends to zero as the number of observation increases. So keep on watching. It'll be hopefully a bit, uh, hopefully now it's a bit clearer and it'll be even clearer um, as you go on watching. Sorry. If you have one observation, the probability of consistency states that in probability, the difference, so the error you're going to make by using your estimator, the sample mean, and the true value, the mean, so the error you're going to make goes to zero in probability. Now, that is a complex term. Uh, you could spend many times on that. You'd have to make certain hypotheses, blah, 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 blah. What it means is, is the error you're going to make by using the sample mean, trying to estimate the mean, the fact that that error is sufficiently large, does that happen with probability zero, the more data points you have? That is complex. Uh, I will try to put some formulas uh, up there as I, as I speak to try to make it more intuitive, even though it may make things worse. Uh, but what it means is the more observations you have, the less your error is going to be. So the more accurate in a way your estimator is going to be. Now, if you have one observation, how can you make, you know, the number you want, basically what you do is you want to make the observation goes to infinity. If you have one, that is impossible. So when you try to estimate the future using one data point, you, you are using an unbiased estimator, but you're not using a consistent estimator. So the probability of your mistake being large is not zero, meaning that you are going to make an error in estimating the future. And that's not good if you want to make money because that's going to lose you money. So what you need is as many data points as possible. Now, how many you may ask? That may be a, uh, a question for uh, uh, a different video, um, as I'm boring you already enough for today. Uh, but uh, you understand the more data point, the better. So what does it mean? Uh, do if I have 20 years of data, well, you can zoom in, take weekly data, and take uh, 100 data points. So a bit less than two years, you can make you can take more than that. 
you can create a basket of booster boxes uh, and uh, you know take the average of that basket uh, used using weekly returns so you have more data points but in that case what you're doing is that you're not considering different variables so you are uh, if you when you're creating a model you're not considering you have a variable so it's, it's, it's it gets more complicated so as you know as I talked about in my last video last week uh, people are trying to pass make you think about Pokemon investing is a simple thing that you, you know if you ignore all of these things and you you know, fine with it you ignore them either because you, you don't care or you don't think they're um, they're important or because you don't know about them that's fine then it's easy if you want to know more then it's not easy um, as a moment yeah I, I won't go into that now another thing I want to talk about another property of the sample mean the question is is the sample mean a robust estimator what does it mean is the sample mean sensible to outliers what i mean by that once again we're considering returns so let's assume that over one week a booster box goes down 10 percent and uh, over the other 20 weeks it goes down up and down you know one percent so pretty much one percent one point five minus one minus one point two minus two minus one point five and then uh, again once it goes down ten percent and uh, another week because there's some news it goes up twenty percent is a sample mean sensible to outliers are those outliers gonna basically impact the average, the sample mean, the answer is yes. So that makes the sample mean not a robust estimator of the mean. What does it mean? It means that, once again, you use a sample mean to predict the future. So you want to try to come up with what is the mean of that returns or that observation time series. Probably not there's uh, some uh, labeling some uh, vocabulary technical vocabulary is that robust is it sensible to a liars yes it is sensible to a liars so you got to be careful it, it, it could the sample mean could tell you something but it, it's not bringing information to what is actually happening out there what has happened in the past because it, it's it's sensible to our liars so those outliers going to be your sword and you're not going to reflect what is actually happening in the fluctuations what at this point you may ask okay Barry uh, can we use something that is not sensible to our liars so it's a robust indicator a robust estimator sorry yes the median the median what is the median the median basically is that um, I'm simplifying that part of the data set um, that part of and once again we are considering returns over um, X amount of uh, time and taken at Y time intervals. Now, the mean is basically the part of a data set that splits the observation in two. So it's kind of like the middle uh, value. And that is, as you can imagine, right? So you, it's also what is called a an order statistic. Um, I hope the translation is correct because first you gotta make give it on order to the observations and then you, you take the you know the half the middle part of the observation so that's also the it, you know the median should recall uh, that um, property and uh, yeah it is robust it's not sensible to aliers why because the aliers are, are far away once you order all the uh, percentage returns they're far out you, you don't look at them you look at the middle what is happening most frequently that's what you look at and uh, that's now you may ask well better should we use the median instead guys as I said these things are not easy uh, you, it depends on what you want to do it depends on a few things the purpose of this video was guys these are some properties that uh, this estimator of the mean, the sample mean that you use every day, but you may not know about it. You, you may not know that from a mathematical, statistical point of view, you're using it. Um, this estimator has some properties. Here are the properties. 
So when you try to predict the future using this estimator, these are the things you should look out for. Actually, Ben made a, a good intro. I think I'm going to use that. Sorry. And uh, that was the purpose of this video, bringing some light on a few things you may not know about it. And hopefully it's a bit clearer now. If not, no worries. These are not simple and intuitive things, but that should make you think if they're not simple uh, and you want to lower them, maybe you're one step ahead of the competition. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.